and we are on air. This is a conversation with Nikki and we're having a wonderful morning, I hope. <laughs> right? Yeah, just getting ready for work. <laughs> okay, so you said you are a geek math teacher, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> I am a total math geek, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Geeks Unite. It's nice to hear, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. So mm, my first question is a big one, and uh, I really want to ask you about your dreams. As far as mathematics and the kids are concerned, what are your dreams? Um, I have a very clear vision now, which is good, actually. I've um, done a lot of changes in my job recently to align with what I want to do, and I basically, my dreams are that every student, whether they be a child or an adult, has the opportunity to learn math in a way that makes sense for them, because I believe that everyone is really capable, but we, the way in which that it's being taught and has been taught just excludes so many people. And I've seen it a lot with my friends at my age, and I see it with the kids that I teach, and it breaks my heart to see a seven-year-old think themselves as stupid or incapable of doing math. Sure. So, so my dream is to change the way that we do it in a sense that we're flexible and that we can meet, you know, the many different learning needs and that teachers understand that math is more than just procedures, but it's about creativity. It's about exploration. It's about, um, you know, I would rather my students find seven ways to the same answer rather than, you know, that kind of. So what I'm doing here is right now I'm working within my school district trying to make that change and hoping to then expand into my own province and obviously as far as it wants to go. So that's that's my dream, is to make it accessible and fun and doable for everybody. Today's a province, tomorrow's a world. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you you dream big and you start working small. Yes. It's, it's the way to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, it, you know, this, this together we are going to collect research and data on hmm. how to do that. Is it something that interests you? Will it help you in your dream to take this divergent mass ideas to people, to students, and then to the whole district? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I jumped at the opportunity. Um, I recognize that a lot of people are homeschoolers and I don't have children yet. So... I thought, well, I'll just collect a few. <laughs> I work with lots. And um, I find that the teachers I work with are very open to change. And the more they hear about what it looks like and sounds like with kids, they're very willing. So the more experiences I can share with their mine or something like this, the more I think will help them kind of embrace, embrace trying things a little bit differently. It really comes down to seeing particular examples. Yes. It, it does. Yep. You can talk about all the different ways mathematics is interesting, or you can show mm -hmm. the different ways, and then people believe it. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is very interesting to hear, and you you have pretty clear ideas of what to take it. So uh, the way we will do it is everybody will start with the same data set, so to speak, with the same problems. Yep. We'll, we'll already give some modifications. So yep. uh, that's what uh, James and Yelena and I provided initially, but we only, of course, can produce three or four modifications, but people will make more. So, so the first task that will start in the first week of July will be to take the first set of problems and to kind of adapt them theoretically, plan to adapt them. Yeah. So uh, does it make sense to do it this way? Oh, absolutely. And I think what, what I've, I've had um, a fair amount of experience with doing that, what I would like to be able to practice, and this is a good opportunity too, is to adapt in the moment. In the moment. So that's, that's what I'm trying to learn to do is like I have my plan, I have my scaffolding and all my support systems, but sometimes the kid goes this way. You know, they just, they go in a completely different way or they're struggling in a way I hadn't anticipated. So I want to be able to be right there with them and be able to learn how to better adjust in the moment to continue to help them without 
giving it to them, you know? So uh, what, what I'm hearing is that you are experienced at planning and preparing the plans and what you hope to learn even more than you do is to expect the unexpected to follow yes. the kids. Yes. So uh, we'll have some little exercises to that. So that's one reason I want the initial plans to be short. So they are open right. to change. At the same time, I think it helps to give some thought, right, to, to the topic, yes. just so, so it's ready. Yeah. So uh, this is a very good point. Uh, so far, what would you say helped you to expect the unexpected and to follow the kids and to, to, to be that flexible? Um, I think what it is is just not trying to, like I have to move away from my plan because I tend to be a very organized, you know, I, I have my to-do list and I go through it linearly. So it's for me, it's to let go of that. And if I need to go in a different direction, go. And what I'm learning to do is just ask the right questions. So sometimes it's like, I'm trying to figure out where are you stuck? Like, what is it? Because, you know, kids will say, I don't get it. And they say, well, I just don't get it. And it's trying to figure out what it is that's blocking them. And, and it often has surprised me because I'm like, oh, like, that's what you're not understanding. So I think for me, it's almost it's developing my questioning and really just yeah, being in the moment and, and recognizing when there's a shift in the child, like either they're turning off or they're getting frustrated or, you know, they're trying to get me to help them too much type of thing. So it's just, I think, really staying tuned into the person I'm working with. Mm -hmm. So it almost sounds like you have to inspire some kids or help them to be brave. <laughs> it, yeah. I feel like we have a real culture here where it is, it's all about getting the right answer as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And students don't want to struggle and persevere and do it wrong. Whereas I think it's great. I think if you spend a whole hour doing it and you don't get to the solution, fine. You've done an hour of mathematics. But it's, you know what I mean? It's not viewed that way. So that's why I'm curious to see how it will go with my five-year-old niece because she hasn't been to school yet. So she hasn't had any of that programming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, if people have had this programming, and I think part of this programming comes from, well, people have been rewarded for getting answers for and for getting yep. a lot of them or for getting them quickly. Yep. So how, and this is what a lot of parents say too, well, so we have explored for an hour. What do we have to show for it? How do we see the progress there? So what would you say to that? Is oh, I would say write about it. Do a journal or do a voice thread. So it doesn't have to be Agreed. progress on a piece of paper with an answer. It can be what did you, you know, like I always do a reflection at the end of my lessons with my students. So I ask them to think about their learning and reflect, and I usually do it out loud, um, but sometimes I ask them to write it down, and you, I've gained way more valuable insights into their learning by having them write about it, about what they did and what they understood and what they didn't understand, rather than just a whole bunch of procedures and, written down. And you can write a story whether you solved the problem or not. Exactly. You can yeah, write absolutely. about an open exploration, you can write yeah. about a closed exploration, anything. It totally. It to yeah. anything. It does. How about young kids who can't write yet? Well, that's, and see, and that's where I don't have a lot of experience with really young kids. So I think we would talk about it and, you know, and I always try and focus on, did you notice any patterns or, you know, just any kind of, any new discoveries, anything that you learned that you didn't see before. But that's definitely not an area I've had a lot of practice in. I've definitely worked with older kids. Okay. So... Well, your, yeah. your niece will probably be a good teacher. I'm sure she does will. She, like to tell stories? <laughs> she does, and like she's, uh, she's very creative. So, Draw, uh, take yeah, she, yeah, and she loves. She's a performer. Oh, so, so she would she, make a whole performance of it. Oh, she absolutely would. She would love it. Yeah. So maybe you can catch her on audio or video for, for yeah, that's her story. Yep. Uh, well. So, uh, sounds like a plan. 
or you, mm -hmm. maybe you can give her as a camera to make a story with, with yeah. the narration. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Uh, so we will be sharing some of these things. Uh, so the things shared in the course will be in the public spaces so other people can see. I just, yeah. I'm just just telling you when, when you ask, uh, when you work with people, with other people, make, let them know that whatever you are sharing, it's in the public space, please. Okay, so yes. Ju just yeah. so we are on the same page about this. And yeah. uh, another thing is... I want to ask you a more technical question now that we talked about the big dreams and w working with kids. Um, so, so far the sign-up process, did it make sense? Did everything work for you? Yeah, everything worked, yeah. And this is my first time doing anything like this. I actually haven't been super technological, but it's a goal line to get in there and to use it more because I recognize its value. So that's also why I thought this will be a good opportunity for me to do that. But yeah, and I found my way through everything just fine. Okay. Thank you. Um, I couldn't tell you were not technological. Uh, so it, things worked. Uh, we try to do this uh, tech stuff because that helps people learn too. So people yes. learn a lot from blogging, for example, or a live communication like this so that's kind yeah. of a part of the course and right. of course i hope everybody will learn from everybody else we have thousands of years of collective expertise just from participants yeah so i'm excited about that as well me too me too okay so uh nikki what other questions and ideas do you have while we're here in the live chat um I don't know that I have any questions at this point. Um, well, yeah, I I would, I'm just wondering what other people will do. Like, I would like to, I really want to just try and push the boundaries and even approach the problems in different ways. Um, I've started doing things with students, like making them do, like act things out, like just getting whole body, whole movement. So I'm just curious as to... I guess what other people are going to do and what like hands-on materials they're going to use or what environments they're going to do it in or, you know, if they're going to do like, if they're going to work with multiple age kids at the same time, like my plan is to do, you know, I'm working with such varied ages, so that'll be at separate times, but I'm curious if someone has, you know, a six-year-old, an eight-year-old and a 10-year-old, how will that work? Kind of. So, so far, um, and I'm, go in by the sign up page and uh, by the emails people are sending some people have very multi-age groups there are some families with many kids and they plan to work together and there are a couple of math clubs uh, who have different ages okay so, and then there are several groups of friends who work together and have kids of different ages so okay the three types of uh, multi-age things and uh, as far as adaptations by different kind of methods so you want to try and have kids act it out or do hands-on and I hear earlier uh, tell stories of it yeah so this would be your thing to try and maybe to plan initially I know some people wanted to try computer worlds so adapt the same problems to do in Minecraft, for example. Right. And some people wanted to try um, if they have kind of more um, traditional mass circles where they're mostly doing problem solving and nothing. But uh, I think they may have uh, sessions where they will work through, the, uh, try to work through as many levels of the problem as mm -hmm. they can and okay. maybe adapt the same problem. Gotcha. So the hope is that once we start adapting the problems, everybody will share within the same space, so we will see all that together. Yeah, that's what I'm really excited to see, yeah. So towards it, and uh, please share. Oh, I will. Yeah. <laughs> and other people will too, so it. Uh, I hope it will be beautiful and interesting. I can't... Yeah. Uh, I, I, see from everybody what people said so far it will be and i yeah. especially hope to see how children adapt the problems me too so uh every time we work 
you, you want to follow the kids and one of the explicit things we'll ask is to invite the kids uh, to change the problems for the kid. So, ah, okay. so here you worked through the problem. How would you change it for, well, for your friends in that group or family or for other kids all over the world who are in that course? So yeah. share their stories and adaptation. Well, some kids can just change the characters and the story or something like that, or they can change how it works. Yeah. And it's okay to be open there. Maybe they change it into something totally different. And that's interesting yeah. too, right? It is interesting, yeah. Okay. Well, this is wonderful. Uh, if you have any questions later, uh, you have the uh, our emails, you have the Skype, so you can chat here. And right. if, you, if you think the question is of very general interest, uh, of course, there is this ask platform where, yes. uh, where the questions are. So that's another good way to post things. So right. uh, uh, talk anytime. I love your ideas. Great. Thank you. Well, thanks for this opportunity. I'm excited. This is good. Thank you. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the stories from you and your kids. Yeah, me too. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Maria. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Bye-bye.